Ladies and gentlemen, the official Rise of Kingdoms YouTube channel just did a sneak peek of two new commanders coming to the game, and they also revealed the museum buffs for Guan Yu, Leonidas, and three of the archer commanders in the museum. So today we're going to go over everything. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on what these new commanders could be, and also what I think of the new museum buffs. But first, what's going on guys? Cheers. Now, if you guys appreciate breaking news for Rise of Kingdoms updates, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the bell clicked down below, because in the next next few days I'm going to be posting a full video that covers update 83 coming soon to the game and you definitely don't want to miss that all right so let's take a look at the silhouettes of these two new commanders coming to the game they actually gave us a ton of information with this screenshot but also they've technically not given us any information with this screenshot which is both exciting but also super frustrating because first of all look they say new commanders and talents but what do we know about this we don't know if they're epic or legendary I think most most people are assuming they're legendary right the only times that we see epic commanders come into the game historically are with new civilizations so in my mind this has got to be the next release of the wheel of fortune and mightiest governor commanders right i mean they don't say that here so that's not it's not confirmed but like that's what would make the most sense to me now i've also speculated on the channel that we could be getting a new civilization soon anyway and if that's the case then maybe one of these commanders is epic and one is legendary so we're at this weird moment in time where it's like you know in the past I've predicted somewhere between mid to end of July is when we would see the next release of the mightiest governor and wheel of fortune commanders I also made an entire video in the past predicting that it's going to be infantry commanders so if you guys missed that video go ahead and check it out I posted that probably weeks ago at this point but the TLDR of that video is that my best guess is that the next commander cycle is going to be one infantry open field commander and one infantry rally commander but again we're also right in the middle of summer and for the past three years I think maybe four years we've gotten a new civilization in the summer every year so is this the next release of the mightiest governor and wheel of fortune or are these silhouettes for commanders in an upcoming civilization I really I have no idea honestly based on this screenshot there is no way to know but there's also like I said before a lot of information that is revealed in this screenshot okay so first of all let's uh, th this is the first thing that I noticed okay the shield and sword looked familiar okay specifically this sword let's take a look at that sword really quick the shape of the blade is basically identical to the sword that CPO is holding both for his prime version and also in his epic version the actual blade itself has like this kind of weird like it's thin and then it gets bigger and I, I that must be some sort of like Roman style blade I mean I guess it's a little bit thinner like it's not as dramatic as CPOs but if you look through a lot of the swords in the game like this looks like the Roman swords that CPO is holding right also if we take a look at what I assume to be a helmet this looks just like the helmet we see on Leonidas and also Pyrus right so what we learn from the commander on the right is that it's probably either an ancient Greek or ancient Roman commander that is my best guess also he's holding a scroll here which is also held by Pericles who's also another ancient Greek commander so to me I mean the blade and the helmet here that kind of gives it away in my mind right like I I, I feel like it's either ancient Greece or ancient Rome that's probably where this commander is from and then if we look at the commander on the left they don't necessarily have any of those similarities right and so if we ask ourselves could this be from a new civilization it could be right I mean it could be anything we don't the Lilith can do whatever they want right but they seem quite different just based on the silhouettes to where I think they're probably from different civilizations in ancient history that's what I think now it could be completely wrong you never know right like when we see silhouettes like this our mind fills it in like uh, subconsciously with things that we're already familiar with so we kind of have like this unconscious bias to assume that we know that it will be one way so again I could be completely wrong about this but they seem like they're from different civilizations now if we take a look at the commander on the left here this shield looks really familiar now looking at this sword from the commander on the right this sword looks almost identical to what epic cpo is holding 
this shield doesn't look as similar to anything in the game as the sword on the dude on the right so there's nothing in the game that looks just like the shield here on this commander on the left but it did give me nevsky vibes right because nevsky is holding a red shield with a golden i i don't know if that's a line it doesn't look like a lion but it's got the got the crown on it here we can see a red shield with a golden an actual golden lion it's also worth noting that you can see like some sort of spurs on the back of the boots down here and if we take a look at nevsky we see the same same thing and those spurs are typically I don't know if spurs are the correct actual technical term you can let me know in the comment section below but those seem to be related to cavalry command right like that's for hitting your horse on the side it's kind of barbaric but I could be wrong about that but I'm pretty sure that's what these are for so is that a cavalry commander on the left are these both cavalry commanders that would make no sense considering we just got Belisarius prime right it wouldn't make sense for these to be cav commanders but like I mean I mean what else would I, I don't know I my brain doesn't know why else those boots would be like that again unless I'm misinterpreting the silhouette based on my subconscious like filling it in with things I already know maybe the boots are just designed kind of weird and those aren't actually spurs but also like if we look at William for example he's got very similar boots actually wait a minute now that I look at it those are almost like that's almost the identical shape of William's boots and also the cape oh man I don't know this this feels there's no way it's a cab commander right like what now the final similarity I want to draw for you guys is actually Richard for some reason my brain thought that Richard's shield looked identical to this new commanders but it actually doesn't when I went in game obviously you can't see Richard's shield but it looks like it's the same shape and he is holding an axe just like this new commander is of course he's missing the same boot design that we saw from William but it is worth noting that Richard and William are from the same civilization right like they're from Britain so that's exciting maybe there's a connection there but then I remembered that Richard's relic is what I was thinking of this is golden bordered with a red background and it has a golden lion on it and if we take a look at this new shield obviously they're different but they're similar shapes not identical but similar shapes I think maybe I'm reaching here maybe like I don't know this it just this is giving me this is giving me like British vibes that's what that's what I'm getting from the dude on the left right based on his boots looking similar to Williams and his shield looking similar to Richard's relic and he's holding an axe like Richard I don't know honestly there's there's just not enough here there's not enough in this image for us to like really say where this commander could be from whereas the commander on the right like to me that seems open and shut like like that's either Roman or Greek in my mind no idea about the dude on the left is it one infantry and one cavalry commander are they both infantry are they both something else entirely right because we see here it says new commanders and talents so like that could mean anything right new talents is just like maybe maybe they have new talents like a new configuration that we've never seen before in the game or maybe we're expecting infantry but it's not going to be infantry so they're saying new talents or maybe one's infantry and one's not and that would be new talents right I don't know what they mean by new. are they talking about a new actual talent tree are we going to be getting a new literal talent tree for these commanders I don't know but again this is what I mean like they gave us so much information but also no actual information and I I, I kind of love that right because it lets us speculate as to who these these commanders are and the speculation builds hype and I think that's always a good thing for the game so what I want you guys to do is let me know in the comment section below what do you think these commanders are do you think they're infantry do you think it's something else entirely what do you think they mean by new talents who do you think they are do you have predictions for who these commanders actually are I would love to know down in the comment section below and with that being said let's move on to the information they revealed for Guan Yu's relic okay we see five percent infantry attack and ten percent infantry defense now this is I, I'm I have mixed feelings about this okay because first of all as a relic alone this is not great right five percent attack not great ten percent defense is decent right I like that but when you consider that it's for Guan Yu I mean look Guan Yu I used him on my last KVK with CPO and he still performs decent he's a little bit squishy these days he only has 30 percent infantry attack right he has no other stats there and so five percent more infantry attack is just like we didn't really need that for Guan Yu and 10 percent defense is nice like the extra like a, a tiny bit of tankiness there for Guan Yu is is beautiful right it's beautiful but I really wished that it was like 
maybe 5% health and 10% defense or 5% defense, 10% health, something like that. That's what I would have liked to see for Guan Yu because really he's got the damage factor. He's got some March speed. He can really pack a punch. He's not really doing anything fancy besides the silence, but what he's missing is he's missing some tankiness, right? And again, they've given him some and 10% and defense is nice. And again, Guan Yu was already in a good place, so he didn't really need a super good relic. So the fact that he's getting one at all is like kind of crazy to be honest with you guys but Guan Yu was like when they first revealed that the museum wasn't a static thing right like they first they put the museum in the game and it was to buff old gold geek gold key commanders right that's what I thought it was and then as time went on they actually added more to the museum they added new commanders to it they added new levels of the buff right and when they started doing that that's in my brain the first thing I thought of was Guan Yu because Guan Yu is technically a season three commander right he's like one of the oldest commanders that we still use in the game and so I thought okay well if you extrapolate that out eventually we'll get a Guan Yu relic and I was right of course I was right and we get the Guan Yu relic now and so I'm excited that he has one did he need one he he's starting to feel like he needed one so I'm glad about that um what do I wish that it was different yeah I wish it was slightly different but at the end of the day like you have to consider you're probably gonna pair Guan Yu with CPO still there's really no other pairing you could do like does this change what you would use Guan Yu for no like can you now use Guan Alex no you can't use Guan Alex it's still too squishy it's still not good enough even with this even with Alex's relic I don't think that it really moves the needle anymore unfortunately so this museum buff in my opinion is not good enough to change what you're gonna do with Guan you're still gonna pair him with CPO and that's the only thing you'll probably ever pair him with ever at this point and so it's nice to know that that March is gonna do just a little bit better you're just gonna get slightly better trades with it and it was already getting good trades to be honest with you guys so I love that but again this five percent attack was a little underwhelming let's move on to the Leonidas relic and what I find funny is that in the update video that they posted they have the Guan Yu relic unlocked but they don't have the Leonidas relic unlocked which just says a lot now in the video to be fair they do go ahead and unlock the Leonidas relic in the video okay so let, let, let's be honest but I think it's funny because uh Leonidas as like this relic is not gonna do anything for him really um the five percent march speed is nice and what this shows me is that the devs know what's holding leonidas back he's too slow right and really like if you look at leonidas's kit he's built to be paired with guan yu like they were released at i think they were released at the exact same time right like one was wheel one was mightiest governor and leo was the worst of the two and he was the mightiest governor so he was kind of already at a disadvantage there and so the devs know that like what's stopping him from even being looked at is his march speed but then they only give him five percent and it's like when you think about commanders like Tamiris for example her level one relic gave archers 10 percent march speed right and I that this this is what Leonidas needed before people would even look at him again I feel like right but unfortunately this is for well I guess if you're an archer player fortunately uh this is for Tamiris and this is a good buff for Tamiris but that's what Leonidas needed and unfortunately we didn't get that now now I'm not saying this is awful right like five percent march speed is nice five percent normal damage reduction is surprisingly better than you think because this should in fact reduce the smite damage you take right like this is a smite damage multiplier so the incoming you know Liu Che's and Gorgos like they're gonna be hitting you for five percent less smite damage but even still like is this gonna move the needle for Leo I don't think so um it's not enough March speed and you know it does say details are subject to the official update in the game maybe Lilith will change this before he comes in the game I doubt it because we already see it here but it is possible um Lilith if you're watching give him 10 or 15 percent march speed and then we'll then we'll talk but as it stands like I run two infantry marches and I have the ability to run a third and would this do anything for me no so am I going to unlock this no um I don't know it's kind of unfortunate I think Leonidas like he was so awesome last summer in the promotional artwork for the new civilization right ancient Greece came out they put Leonidas in all this artwork and his design is so sick dude like this is easily one of the coolest most badass looking commanders in the game and his kit is just very underwhelming right and so a five percent march speed bonus and a five percent normal damage taken reduction is not enough in my opinion to warrant a change to how he's used also if I remember correctly I'm pretty sure Dragothian made a video like four years ago talking about how like this isn't as good as you think it is on the fourth skill and so yeah the damage factor here is too small who knows right I could be wrong I'm just speculating here maybe Guan Leo makes a return with these in with these buffs to the museum 
but if i were a betting man i would say probably not so guys i want to see justice for leonidas okay give him a better buff give him something sick look how badass this dude is you're telling me he's not good in the game what anyway they also revealed some of the increased buffs to the archer commanders now previously they've revealed that we're going to be getting a third tier of upgrade for infantry commanders and then they just never put it in the game and here we see they're they're already revealing like we don't even know what the new updates are if i remember actually did they reveal them i don't remember if they even revealed i, ca I can't remember but to this day we don't have the third tier upgrades to the infantry commanders and here they're already showing off the third tier upgrades for archer commanders so is this are these commanders going to be getting their updates before the infantry ones even though the infantry ones were announced first i have no idea we'll have to wait and see and you know when the update actually comes out into the game but here you're looking at you can tell based on the relic that this is for ysg and here we're going from 20 percent defense and five percent skill damage that's the tier two for ysg and now it's going to be 20 percent defense and 12 percent skill damage now this is a double-edged sword right because first of all more skill damage is always good and this more than doubles the amount of skill damage that the relic is giving him it's going from five to twelve so a seven percent increase in skill damage which is amazing however there was no change in the defense and like this would have been such a shoe in like oh god they were so close they were so close to making this a, a, a worthwhile upgrade right like this is they should have bumped it up to 30 percent defense or 25 percent defense right because if they did that then we could at least argue that ysg is nearly as tanky as nebu right but now we can't and and look again more skill damage is always good right like that's why the ottoman empire civilization is good that's why the twilight fall city skin is good that's why ysg's fourth skill is so good it's giving him 50 percent but that's the one thing that ysg already had a ton of okay we already have 50 percent skill damage on ysg um did we need more skill damage did, uh, again i'm not gonna say no to more skill damage but like i would have rather seen um you know like look this is what the most is getting okay they're giving him 20 percent more attack and keeping the health the same what i would have loved is if they gave ysg 20 percent more defense and kept the skill damage the same right that's what i would have loved to see imagine a ysg with 40 percent archer defense and five percent skill damage to me that would have been the better way to do this in my mind right because ysg again he's already got a ton of skill damage he's already got the aoe it's already insane okay and what he's missing is tankiness and the 20 percent defense is okay but 40 percent would have been better than nebu and that's like that would have been like a new benchmark right that would have been sick maybe people would have considered using ysg again or maybe we settle somewhere in the middle and we do like 30 percent defense 10 percent skill damage or 30 percent defense 7 percent skill damage something like that that would have been really cool but that is not what we got we got 20 percent defense 12 percent skill damage and again it's a double-edged sword because first of all more skill damage that's good ysg already does a lot of skill damage we'd love to see it okay but to me you know in my mind in a perfect world this third tier upgrade would have given him a third stat bonus and it would have given, and it would have given him 10 percent march speed right like if they gave him you know let's imagine that the third tier upgrade gave him 25 percent defense five percent skill damage nothing changed and then 10 percent march speed like that would have been like oh baby that would have been that would have been sick that would have been what i like that would have been a dream for me that would have been what ysg needed but unfortunately he's getting seven percent more skill damage so if you wanted more skill damage on your ysg this is going to be sick for you uh otherwise you know personally for me i'm probably not going to do this upgrade it's very expensive and it doesn't move the needle for my ysg he's going to be probably on the bench forever at this rate which is unfortunate but that is just the truth now you can see here based on the relic that this is actually the relic for el cid so they did reveal the new el cid relic upgrade he goes from 25 percent attack to 35 percent attack and his active skill damage has not changed and therefore el cid is still useless right I mean like let's just be honest with ourselves you know it I know it everyone knows it there is going to be no change like this is not this doesn't move the needle at all guys um El Cid like man he I mean this is like this is not you know they should have if they were going to do anything they should have doubled his active skill damage factor and left the attack the same right and, and even that probably like would that have done anything probably not right but if he had like 600 extra active skill damage which would have bumped it up to 1600 single target like would that have moved the needle probably not right but like i don't know um i don't think this is going to do anything for el cid i think he's kind of screwed i think el cid is just going to be doomed forever to be irrelevant especially because like i said before this is the relic that we're getting for thutmose you can see here this is the thutmose 
Ravenous Relic, and they are giving him 45% Archer Attack and keeping the 20% health, which means he's getting 65% of stats from his Relic alone, which is insane. That might be the most amount of stats on any Relic in the game, right? Like Minamoto gets 60%, which is wild. This is a lot. Now, here's the thing about this, right? First of all, does this mean you should invest in Thutmose? No, absolutely not. Should you get him in the early game? If you're a whale and you want to do rallies, sure. Otherwise, no. The answer is still no. But what this does mean is that the most is like kind of a decent transition from early game to season of conquest, right? Like I'm not saying he's meta in season of conquest, but it's like, if you look at his entire kit and then you add 65 percent of stats on there he has a three target thousand damage factor aoe he already gets a little bit of march speed 15 percent attack outside of territory is 15 percent more all damage 10 percent defense an instant proc skill damage debuff and you take 10 percent less counter attack damage you have a 10 percent chance for instant proc 700 whenever your troop uses a skill you have a 30 percent bonus to normal damage for three seconds i mean these have a long cooldown to be honest with you guys but like okay so he gets 45 percent attack from the relic with his built-in attack he has 60 percent archer attack that's insane okay on top of that he gets 10 percent defense and 20 percent health so he has 90 percent of archer stats guys that's insane that is actually an insane amount of stats on top of the fact that he is also doing other things you get march speed you get all damage outside of territory you get some debuffs you get some instant proc like thutmose might be like one of the best gold key commanders if not the best gold key commander to transition from kvk1 to season of conquest right like who else besides ysg right like that's actually kind of insane and i kind of i'm here for it i kind of love it right i kind of like to see that mo's getting all this love and attention i think that as a design as a commander he's sick he's one of the coolest commanders that they've added recently he's got some really interesting talent trees with archer and support right like i think people are sleeping on that especially with 65 percent more stats like that is incredible anyway guys that was everything from the official update video that i wanted to discuss today like i said earlier i'm gonna post a full review of update 83 later in a couple of days so make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you're notified when that video goes live while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below your thoughts on who you think these new commanders are going to be are they part of a new civ are they part of the mightiest governor and wheel let me know in the comment section below and also and what do you think about the new relic stats that were revealed in the update video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace